Okay, so I saw this in a video. You can click the comment. You can watch the video. Um, no. <laughs> to, 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 to this, no. Absolutely not. What should happen is paleontologists, first off, should get paid more to be able to fund their digs, to be able to have as much time and as much funding as they possibly can to be able to get you the 100% accurate look to these animals so they can have the time, so they can have the money, so they can get the permits to do all the things to be able to look up and dig through the ground in sometimes scorching deserts and sometimes blistering cold uh, areas like Antarctica to be able to find these fossils to put them back together and to give you the most accurate look to these animals as possible. Now, in the video, they were talking about Spinosaurus and Spinophorus. Now, I've already done a video on Spinophorus. It is from the book All Yesterdays, and that book is just kind of explaining to the public that there is a better way to reconstruct extinct animals mostly dinosaurs so there's also uh uh more interpretations of behavior like the, the, i think on the cover there's a bunch of protoceratops just chilling out in a tree it's possible they could do that none of the stuff in the book is improbable but when it comes to paleo artists and depicting what these animals looked like you can't just go cool as fuck edgy 90s spikes everywhere basically what jurassic world does you can't do that because they're animals you know if if you're gonna make a fantasy world like jurassic world like jurassic park you know science fiction sure go for it go go crazy but don't try and paint it as reality like spinosaurus is kind of the famous one for going all over the place with its design um, and that's just because we keep finding more fossils on it. Like, especially with the tail fluke, that was, what, two years ago that scientists discovered that? And it was attached to the body, so, like, what are you gonna do about it? You know? It's like, it's like people giving, I don't know, stegosaurus plates on a tiger, it's like, but that's not what it looks like. It looks cool, you know, if it's like some sci-fi fantasy creature, you know, that's fine. That's all well and good, but that's not what it looks like, and that's the problem. Again, you can make your dinosaurs look cool as fuck. You can make them look edgy, spikes, you know, teeth and claws and, you know, whatever you want if it's fake, but if we're trying to use science, trying to use the discoveries of these amazing people of uncovering these animals from millions of years ago and we're trying to figure out what they really looked like just slapping the the edgy sticker all over this just doesn't work because that's not what scientists are trying to do people like myself who are obsessed with dinosaurs enough to get a tattoo um, it, my, my problem with, especially media nowadays, is that we've kind of just stuck with Jurassic Park and we're not trying to progress. Uh, Prehistoric Planet is probably the, if not the best way to watch some kind of dinosaur media because the, 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 Creators of that show went out of their way to find paleontologists like Darren Nash. I, I, I don't think he's a paleontologist. I'm not quite sure. But also paleo artists like Gabriel Ugueto. I mention him all the time because he has a great art style and it's so recognizable. Because if you look at some of the dinosaurs in that show, immediately, if you're a fan of his, you're like, that's Gabriel Ugueto. Because him and so many other paleo artists they go through the painstaking process of reading 
every paper, every media source, everything. They soak it all in like a like a goddamn sponge. And they put that into their art so then people like us, just run-of-the-mill people, can figure out, oh, this is what they look like. They don't look like from the, you know, the 1970s when they were all standing upright with their tail dragging on the ground because everybody thought they were just stupid lizards. When obviously they're not. They're Some of them are very intelligent. Some of them have been proven to have mating rituals. Some of them have been proven to be colorful. We can see what color they were. Like, again, just by default trying to make them as cool as possible, whatever... I don't know, man. You might want to look at some... Pa- uh, Mark Witten. That's another great paleo artist. He has... He might have the edge that you're looking for. He likes to put a lot of stripes, a lot of uh, rough skin and bumps and spikes every so often, kind of. Like, uh, what are they called? Dermal spikes? Basically stuff that goes down the back, you know, whatever. So if, if you want to kind of have that similar edginess or cool as possible kind of stuff look up his art because like i said he's got he's got this nice like paint stroke too that looks very like sloppy in a way but also kind of i don't know there's just something about it mark witten with two t's look him up you might like his art and he just like gabriel Ugueto, um all all sorts of people out there all paleo artists You know, they try their best to make these things look as real as possible, as up-to-date as possible. And that's just kind of what we have to do, especially with stuff that are extinct. We're just lucky that, like, the dodo bird, which is a dinosaur, it is an avian dinosaur, even though it doesn't fly. Um, We have remains of that, like, mummified remains of it, literally. Like, it was that close enough to be able to, you know, have skin tissue and stuff like that. And we still yet have to do that research, that understanding of what this thing looked like. Because if we just gave it feathers that were, like, black, and then the the eyes were red, and the, and the, and the, and the feet had razor-sharp claws with serrations on you can't do that because it's a dodo bird right we have physical evidence of what this thing actually closely looked like well let's go back to non-avian dinosaurs edmontosaurus we have a mummified edmontosaurus so we know what it looked like we know that it had hooves in the front you know how you know in dinosaur aladar walked around like this not too far off this finger was kind of hidden like back here and then these were covered with a hoof like one nail went over that you couldn't see these these fingers these digits um the muscles have mummified not not like our mummies not human mummies but like they've preserved so well that you can see the muscle strands you can see the skin you can see you know all these soft tissue things that have turned to stone by now um you know so it again if you want some edgy looking paleo art i kind of do that but it's again it's as accurate as you can get uh and mark witten is probably a better uh paleo 100 percent better than me holy shit way better than me but like like he does this shit for a living but like maybe that's the edginess that you're looking for but it's or i guess the the coolest possible by default um that you're looking for but in a more realistic and scientific way does that make sense i hope that helps and uh good luck